What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Louis Coach Review back again with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on the Connoisseur mod by the League of Scoundrels. Now, a lot of people misunderstand the pronunciation of this mechanical tube mod because it's spelled C O N S V R. So, a lot of people call it the cons Conserve mod, which is. I think is it's incorrect. I believe they're calling it the Connoisseur mod. And it's uh, one of the latest hard-hitting mechanicals that League of Scoundrels has put out. Now, granted, they come out with their first version mod, which was the League of Scoundrel mod, which everybody loved, the aluminum, but everyone loved the copper, and everyone loved the brass version. Then it came out version 2, the limited edition uh, version 2s that lacked that little concaveness on the top, and it was just a straight tube that said League of Scoundrels on it, with the same style button on it, of course, and everybody loved those. And then they came out with the military edition League of Scoundrel mods and so forth. But what I like about this, this mod particularly, it differs from all the mods that they have, based simply on the shape, the comfort, and what they did with it, okay? Um, now, the mod itself, it has a new and interesting way of doing a 510 connection. It's it's like almost like a hybrid slash pin design. Um, I like that because the pin on here is a floating pin, but instead of it being a pin, it's an actual brass ball bearing. Now, my opinion about the ball bearing, I feel maybe the ball bearing should have been silver plated or gold plated. And the reason why I say that is, is because it's brass and brass patinas so by patining you know you want to be able to clean it but it is a little ball bearing <laughs> so being that it's a ball bearing cleaning a ball bearing you're not working with a flat surface but what's nice about it being a ball in the 510 connection is that it has just one point of contact right to the 510 so you don't have to balance or have a level fit or a flush fit contact with your 510 pin of your RDA with your mech mod. It's just going to make one point of contact and that's it. And the same goes for the copper contact down in the switch area. It's also a round head as well, whereas that round head will have one point of contact, which is nice. So at least you know you're getting an even level of contact in just the right amount, what you need, just to make contact. <laughs> I said contact a lot. So just a rundown on this mechanical tube mod, it is 25 millimeter through and through, but it also has an hourglass shape to it. And it also has a flat spot on one side, flat spot on the other to make the ease of comfort in holding the device. Obviously you hold it in the hourglass section right there, but it's also flat on both sides. So it's comfortable to hold it in a hand. So they did a good job on the design work for the comfort of using it. You know, some people, when they fire the devices, they hold it all the way at the very bottom and they just push up and they fire. Me, I like holding it somewhere in the middle. I like holding my mech mods in the middle or sometimes on the very bottom, depending on what kind of mech mod it is. But this one, since they give you the option of having it placed in the middle, it's very comfortable in the hand to use it and to hold it. Now, we got the hourglass design to it. We've got uh, the round copper contact down on the switch, the round ball bearing contact, which is brass up in a 510 connection. And we have an O-ring uh, battery cushion, which it comes with an O-ring that sits at the switch. And I'll show you it. Um, me, I've replaced mine like three times already, but you can use any O-ring that fits in there. I mean, I have tons of O-rings laying around. Is it a necessity to have it? No, I don't even need the O-ring cushion. Because honestly, it works without it. So why even have it? I guess it's just an extra option, I guess. Who knows, you know? Um, skull battery etching. So in the skulls, I got a skull at the bottom of my switch. Mine is laser etched black. Most of them don't come with this black etching, okay? Uh, most of them come with just a skull that's been laser etched, but not black. Mine is black. Okay, so I thought that was a cool little feature to have. Something a little different from everybody else. Uh, it's got two sets of knurling on the switch itself, so you can easily remove it and not have your fingers slide around. So that's nice to have. Um, comes with a plastic top casing. So the casing that holds the ball bearing in the 510 connection is made of plastic. 
has two little holes in it. You can easily turn it, which is nice. It also has a plastic battery height adjustment down at the bottom as well, which is fine. It works very easy to use. Uh, there's no complication in using it. And it's got a very soft touch to the button. It's not super soft, but it's a nice throw into the button. So it's nice. It's a, like a medium firmness. And there's also magnets in there so you can adjust how you like your throw, which I like. And it also comes with a nice leather chamois. Now, if in the event you polish your mod and you're out and about and you have the leather chamois on you, you could always buff it with the leather chamois. Now, the leather chamois doesn't clean the mod, but it will free it up from fingerprints. So if you're fingerprinting up your shiny brass mod, you can just take your leather chamois and just wipe it down real quick. If not, you don't need to carry a leather chamois with you. You could just carry a napkin with you or whatever it is that you want. But the leather chamois seems to grip it nicely and give it a nice buffing and shining. So that's also nice. Um, the brass on here is really, really well-made brass. Um, very conductive. It's a very nice, comfortable mod. You know, as far as a review goes, I give this mod two thumbs up because it's a great mechanical tube mod. Comfortable, not too light, not too heavy. It's got a nice thickness in the tube, so it makes it a very comfortable mod to use. And uh, I'm rocking a 528 Custom Goon on top right now. As far as the fit, there is a little bit of a lip because this is a 25 millimeter wide mechanical tube mod whereas the goon is a 24 so i have one millimeter of a ledge surrounding the rda which i don't mind i don't need it to be flush i don't need it to be seamless some people need a seamless tube mod rda combo i don't unless it's something drastic you know where you have like a 30 mil tube with like a 22 millimeter rda then it looks kind of dumb with that step you know what i mean but like this it's okay it's close and it doesn't bother me so let's dive up close let's check out this mod in pieces and go from there so we have the contents of our switch and our 510 connection broken down i just wanted to show you guys piece by piece what we're working with here The switch housing itself is very well vented. You can see there is big holes for venting reasons, okay? And the, and the reason why they do this, simply because they don't want anybody blowing their hand off. And if in the event in a case of a venting or thermal runaway of the battery, they want to make sure that everyone is safe. Now, uh, to put this back together, you basically take your magnets... Drop one inside, find the polarity that they're reversing from. So that's a reverse. This is our brass button with the black skull etched into the button itself. Uh, you can see we do have female brass threading. The threading is very nice, very clean, very well, very, very well machined. I mean, 165 bucks, you're getting quality work here. as well as the housing. You can see how nice the housing looks. Very well made. Great knurling, crosshatch knurling. And what I love mostly is look at the thread. Big, beefy threads and not a lot of threads. Only two male threads on this connection. If we look down into the top of the housing, you can see where the venting is. And there's something very important about the housing on this on this switch, just to show you. If you look right around the center hole, there's raised sections right there. Those raised sections are to make sure the magnet does not sit completely flat into the housing. Those raised sections right there is where if in the event your battery is going to vent through the tube, it will come through the top right here, come through those holes, pass in between the magnet and the housing of this switch, and then follow out through the sidewall channels for venting, okay? So it's very important that you know that they took that extra caution. They said, okay, if we're gonna place a magnet in there flat, it cannot sit flush into the housing. We need to raise it. That's exactly what they did there. They raised it right there. So 
we have our button and our magnets all put together. We're going to take our thick, beefy, male threaded contact made of copper, solid copper. Okay. It's got a round head to it. You can see there's a round head and there's a very minimal point of contact right there, dead center where that black mark is. Just take that, thread it into our female button. Now the threads on here are actually pretty sharp. So I would just I would just advise people if you're gonna be handling this, try not to slice your hand on there. Okay, they are pretty sharp. This is our plastic battery height adjustment, and you can see there are four holes or channels meant for venting. The threading on this plastic spacer is reverse threaded. So when you place it in here, you turn it counterclockwise to thread it on then clockwise to expand it you can see if I go clockwise it extends it if I go counterclockwise it makes it go inside now they give you an o-ring that goes right here it sits right here and this is just for battery cushioning okay I don't really need this really, but some people, you know, feel it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. I don't have any issues using the device without the cushion, but since I have another O-ring and it happens to fit in there perfectly and it does protrude just by a hair, I'm fine with this. It doesn't bug me at all. The 510 connection this is why I said it's like borderline half hybrid, half pin connection. You have two beefy threads in there as well. And if we look on the inside, this is kind of sore, made in USA. Now, if you notice there's threads on the outside and threads on the inside. Threads on the inside are to hold our plastic pin holder, okay? It's a plastic pin holder, which basically a ball bearing will sit in there and rest on that ledge. And depending on how you adjust your height of your RDA pins, you'll be able to adjust the contact here. This is the this is the brass ball bearing, which is our point of contact in the 510 connection. Uh, it does patina, so at times you're going to have to uh, polish this from time to time, or you can just move it to a different spot or location, and then you know it'll just make contact there on a cleaner connection. What I like to do is I like to drop this into our plastic holder and then thread my top 510 onto it. And you're good to go. So your ball bearing is floating in there. Once you adjust the height for your RDA, then you should be fine. The tube on itself is very nice, very well made. There's a flat spot there I was talking about. There's another flat spot on this side, which is really great to handle and hold this mechanical tube mod. It does have the hourglass shape in the center in which you could place the area between your index finger and thumb and rest it there and still have a good grip with these flat spots on the tube. Uh, it does say kind of sore right up top, okay. When you want to distinguish whether they're whether the top of the mod or the bottom mod, just where look where it says connoisseur, and then you'll know that this is the top where the 510 connection would go. Very nice tube. Very nice mod. You can see there's also a ledge in there. Although it's a 25 millimeter, the um inside is measuring i believe at 19 and a half millimeters on the inside so you do have a little space between your battery and the walls of the mechanical tube mod
Now you can see there's a seam there. So what I have to do is I have to adjust my battery down at the bottom for the battery height adjustment. So remember clockwise makes it go in, meaning away from the battery. A little rattle. So back it out, go clockwise to back it out. Tight, counterclockwise, no battery rattle whatsoever, very nice mod, very clean, and angry as fuck. So I gotta say, this is a fucking cloud tracker and a half. It is very, very comfortable. 165 bucks really is not that bad for this mechanical tube mod. You might even be able to find it at $130 or $145. I've seen it everywhere at different prices, so it's hard to judge whether or not this is a better deal versus this is a better deal, because some companies and some websites will run specials. I don't have a coupon code for this because I just don't. <laughs> now this was uh this mod was purchased this mod uh was actually traded i actually did not buy this i traded a mechanical tube mod of mine with uh, a friend of mine little ricky i traded one of my mods for this mod so i didn't purchase this mod but it wasn't given to me either i did trade a mod for a mod and in the vaping industry you know once you start collecting mechanical tube mods you'll find people out there that trade these things up back and forth you know you you own something for a little bit you don't see yourself owning it in the future, and then you trade out for something else. Just like this mod, this is something I'm gonna hold on to because I really dig the design aspect and how well it hits. You know, I was told when it was given to me, when I traded out for it, it's just like, I don't know, I really like the way it hits. I'm like, I love the way this thing hits. You know, I mean, this thing, right now my cotton's dry and it's hitting, you know? So let's juice it up with a little flag. This is a company called Flag, by the way, and uh, they got a juice flavored by the name of Stars. 50% of all profits, and it says it right on the bottle, 50% of all profits is donated for advocacy. So they get 50% of product uh, of sales on all this on all the product they sell, and they give it up for advocacy. So I think that's a pretty noble cause uh, for someone to come out with a juice company, whereas they can make a couple hundred grand if they wanted, but instead they give 50% of their earnings to advocacy. And I think that's pretty cool. I just hope they're giving it to the right advocacy and that advocacy is using it properly. So yeah, I think that's pretty angry. <laughs> that's a hard hitting mod. I don't know what Ricky was thinking, but this is a hard hitting fucking mod. Naturally, of course, as always, it is a type of build that you have in here. Right now, currently, I've got the Grinch wire in here, a little Grinch Life wire, but this is the 24 gauge Grinch Life wire. This 24 gauge parallel wrapped five times on a three millimeter. Sorry, I had a look. Sometimes I do four wraps, sometimes I do five. For a five wrap, it's vaping really nicely. I mean, it's really angry. I'm rocking an LG battery in here, one of the the higher uh, drain batteries, basically. But it's a, it's a nice battery. It's a nice tube mod. It does not get hot. I do not get lightning button. And the venting on it is great. There's enough venting on there where I feel secure, and there's enough space around the battery that if it were to vent from the top, I know that energy will be thrown out through the switch. So it's good to see that that is an option and that's there. So safety is there and functionality is there. I give it two thumbs up because I really do love the design and I do love the looks and I love the way it hits. And when it polishes up, it looks really shiny and really nice. I mean, it's a hard hitter. For a brass mod, it hits pretty hard, I would say. You know, it hits just as hard as most of my copper mods, you know. And the difference between copper and brass is very minute, but you know what? It's nice to have a shiny brass mod. I love the way brass looks like when it shines up because to me, it's just, it, it's reminiscent of gold. And I could stick a gold RDA on there. If I want, I could stick my, um, my gold plated uh, Apocalypse RDA from um, 
you know, Armageddon Manufacturing. Or I could use my AVB Labs. Uh, AVB Labs came out with a nice flavor chasing RDA. I could stick it on there. It looks great. Or I could use a Brass Kennedy 24 and it'll look great on there, you know. Anything I want to stick on here, it's going to look good. And you know what? Just as long as the build is right, it's going to vape like a motherfucker. And that's it. That's all I can tell you. So if you're interested in picking up the Connoisseur mod, I highly suggest it. I'm going to put a link in the description down below. Unfortunately, I don't have a coupon code for it because I just don't. <laughs> okay. But this was traded out for one of the other mods that I own. So I traded out. And this was a great trade. Uh, for the record, I really, really dig this mechanical mod. It's a great mod. It works really well. So from me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Laters.